Alright, we've got one package this time. Very simple update. Oh, should be. Alright, so we have another one, you know, a series I might pick back up and finish watching. The Greatest Demon Lord is reborn as a typical nobody. Complete season. Because I started watching it, it was hard for me to keep watching it because... Oh, it's nice underneath the slipcover. I guess something about it was a little off. Like, I felt like it got distracted from its premise. Not that it's the only anime I've watched recently, even within the last year, you know, like that. There's some currently airing stuff that I'm barely keeping up on for some reason. I, I don't even know why. Some of it is just like definitely not as good as this one in terms of. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Regions A and B. I'm trying to remember how to read this new format. Because that should be our um, episodes. Hmm. I guess this text here somewhere says um, whether it's got an English dub. I would guess it does, because I'm pretty sure it does on Crunchyroll. But. I don't know. Hopefully, y'all saw it a little bit more clearly than I did, because you know, it's a pretty small text for me. This here's another series that I think I watched the first episode or two of on Crunchyroll, and I could probably watch more of it. It was, you know, kind of nice and simple, a little different underneath the slipcover. Again, always nice when that happens. Because I remember it not necessarily being bad what I watched, but I guess it didn't hit whatever I was feeling like watching. Regions A and B, there's an English dub. We've got our two main characters and the two main characters. Next up, The Dawn of the Witch, another show that I never quite finished. Although I did try picking it up again. I'm not, I don't remember why I keep feeling I have trouble finishing it. Definitely a bit of a curious show, that's for sure. Uh oh. Okay, I couldn't tell if there was any more plastic underneath or not. Let's see, I see the regions A and B there, and somewhere here is where it mentions. That's a lot of audio. I'm seeing French and German, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. A lesson in the mystic arts awaits. It's this complete series. Oh yes, and different underneath the slipcover. That's a uh, three for three. With I think the last one maybe not doing that, but that's okay. I mean, it can't really do that if it doesn't have a slipcover, right? Last but not least, we have Onipan, which I mentioned I had actually watched a couple episodes of last week, and it seemed okay. I guess I wasn't quite sure where they would be going with the general premise that would definitely be um, the plastic is not coming for you. That's really annoying about that. It's plastic. There's nothing for you to hang on to anymore. There's no more other plastic left. And yet, somehow, it doesn't want to come off. See, I got the big plastic off, but... Hmm. 
But yeah, what can, what can I say about this show? Mm -hmm. Entertaining. It's not. A, it doesn't seem like a bad show. I'm not sure why it. Um, yeah, I, I was just saying that, wasn't I? Jesus, and I just forgot what I was saying in the middle of saying it. Uh, I see a region A only. Uh, Japanese with English subtitles only. I guess it makes sense. It's only subtitled on uh, High Dive. And so it's a single disc. Well, that's a title right side up, but I think no matter what, you know, the character is going to be cool. off to the side. Well, you know, nice and quick and pretty much actually a good release, I would say. Here's this week's anime. This is all Blu-ray. Here's this week's anime Blu-ray collection update. And I know I don't do this as much as I should, but it's always nice when I can talk about an anime. Technically, I didn't watch it off the Blu-ray. I watched it off of High Dive. You know, it's a little easier, I guess, to just watch an episode here or there. Um, I, I guess without swapping out a lot of Blu-rays or stuff like that. Sometimes even pause in the middle of episodes. It just is works better for some reason but yeah I watched all of season two and it was pretty entertaining I thought um I don't remember how season one looked and felt and there was more details about season one that I didn't remember but when I did you know there's a little bit of element there where it's like even though there's a kind of element to this that is kind of our main characters doing their own thing I think there's a bit more aim to it which kind of you know makes it kind of entertaining to watch goals, many of which I didn't remember from the first season, and plot elements from the first season I didn't remember. You know, I got reminded of them here, but it was entertaining. And beyond that, it's just kind of got this amusing implementation that's just kind of... Eh, th throws interesting things at you, and then you're like, oh yeah, they were doing that. And it doesn't feel like it slouches in terms of developing the things it needs to develop. I'm trying to think if I want to say, oh yes, and so, you know, story progresses through this season and it feels pretty naturally done and just overall kind of nice. It was a very entertaining season. Uh, I think sometimes I sat down here and that's because it's actually part of the stuff that just came out. Anyways, finished ReZero Season 2 with my friend. Um, yeah, always nice to rewatch the best parts of ReZero. You know, there's a couple of parts of it that can be just really excruciating, aggrav aggravating to watch, but, um, maybe even stressful. I, I guess it depends. Combina different combinations of the different things depends. But, you know, when ReZero gets good, it gets really good. And season two ends at a good place. You know, I think I've said before that I felt like there were some things done about this ending that were a little... Uh, there's a little bit of back and forth there, but there's also other tonal things that I like that they really did where they, um, I felt like they set up an easy way out in order to intentionally take a much more, um, difficult, thoughtful, impactful way out, I suppose. And I don't know if I said that last time, but, you know, it's one of those things that I just kind of appreciate about this, um, second season. Now, there is more for me to potentially watch with my Friday friend especially, but my guess is we're probably going to explore a couple of other things first. Like, for example, um, you know, there's a Sword Art Online movie here for us to watch. There's a Reincarnated as a Slime movie to watch. And we might watch one of those before we get to um, the movie for this. And there could be even other things that I'm not thinking about right this minute. And of course, once um, the next One Piece DVD Blu-ray comes, you know, that's gonna be a high priority. Especially since One Piece is actually doing some very interesting stuff where we are. But, um, yeah, it's all stuff. I'm not sure what's next in that regard. Uh, Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts, episode five. A neat little episode, I think. Um, I'm not sure if I have much else to comment on. I, you know, I'm trying to go through these quicker, unless something interesting, I think, comes to mind. Kamikatsu Working for God in a Godless World, Episode 7. I think a pretty interesting continuation of the premise of the show, with the added depth that the show kind of uh, implied would be there, so it's been fun. Konosuba, An Explosion on This Wonderful World, Episode 5. Um... 
good development. Um, I guess the main issue just is again that you know if if you're invested in the Konosuba universe, I think it's good. If you are um, hoping for that Konosuba um, style of humor, it's not quite there. There's slight elements of it, but I guess it's because uh, I guess there's a lot of reasons that could be because um, the legendary hero is dead. Episode seven. I guess some entertaining stuff happening in there. The show's not staying completely stuck in a bad joke that just keeps going on episode to episode. The relationship with the characters is interesting. It's I guess if there's any issue, it's that... I don't know. I, I guess it almost feels like there isn't a good, consistent day-to-day, um, -day, so to speak. So it's kind of hard to look forward to some of the content just because while it's mostly okay, I guess... It's just hard to say if it's going to hit well or not. Um, is it wrong to try to pick up a pick up girls in a dungeon? Season four, episode sixteen. Uh, you know this portion of season four continuing to be good. Uh, if any problem with it, it's that the thing I'm more interested in is the part that's not getting quite as much attention. But it is setting up a whole lot of stuff, and you know it, it's all connected together. And the other stuff isn't bad. And I think I said this last week, but um, definitely. Uh, I don't know. I'd almost want to be binging uh, Season 4 at this point, or the remainder of it. Uh, Dr. Stone, Season 3, Episode 5. I did not enunciate that very well. Dr. Stone, in case you missed. Um, good episode. Um, good series. I'm continuing to enjoy what it does. It, if you kind of started watching Dr. Stone and enjoyed what it was doing, especially at the beginning, you may probably be very enjoying season three because I kind of feel like some of the other stuff while it did have that element very strongly almost felt like its direction was a little weird so you know good good season three good season three my one hit kill sister episode seven mm. I don't know uh, my big problem with the show is I'm not a big fan of the things that are built on lines and so when I was talking about the greatest Demon Lord is reborn as a typical nobody. My one to get Hill sister is doing a better job of why am I watching this again? At least there's some stereotypes to Greatest Demon Lord that I could latch onto. I just I think I got tired of them because um, I don't know if they were really leaning on the primary concept as much and mostly more on the stereotypes and tropes, I guess. Maybe. Uh, but, you know, I think I've mentioned before that it's kind of probably the lowest on all the stuff, most likely something I'd be dropping. Mashley, Magic Muscles, episode 6.5. Uh, that's how Crunchyroll labeled it. I'm not sure if it was officially labeled that way when it aired, but it's basically just a recap episode. I'm trying to remember if there was maybe just a tiny bit of content at the end of it, but it mostly doesn't matter. It's a good reminder of where the previous episode ended, but uh, I guess as a halfway point through at least the series or the first core, definitely is there to remind you of all the stuff. Yeah, it's fine. Rokuto's Bad Girls, episode 7. Um, <clears throat> mostly I'm hesitating to think because do I want to say if there's a potential weakness with this show in that I'm not quite sure where its end goal might be, although it does seem to have a bit of a direction, and it does seem to be continuing to throw interesting curveballs there and keeping our main cast of characters at least interesting. And again, like I said, the original concept kind of creeped me out a little bit, but it's done a pretty good job of not doing that too badly, so... You know, pretty fine. Too Cute Crisis, Episode 7. Uh, what specifically happened in this episode? Okay, some interesting stuff. Um, I suppose the interesting thing we want to see from this show is maybe not necessarily our main character doing the same reaction, but other characters doing different reactions. Oh. Sorry. Uh, I was, I've got a um, Twitch streamer on then. Their friend just died to a creeper. Oops. Da, 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 da. Uh, episode 7, though, was introducing some of that idea. It's interesting to see where it goes from there. But, 
like I said, the, the show also has some issues in terms of sometimes I feel the mannerisms of the animals aren't quite right. With cats and dogs being the main one, just because it's like, uh, yeah, some of that stuff is not quite how they th think per se. But, oh well. Hell's Paradise, Episode 8. If there was any problem with this episode, it was just that we didn't see our main characters. But it's not necessarily bad, because how our other characters tie into the main characters is a potential high point. And these characters are interesting on their own. It's just, you know, our main characters are more interesting. And so, you know, it's maybe an okay to good episode. We'll just have to see um, where it goes from there. Summoned to Another World for a second time, episode 7. Uh, stuff happened that's kind of relevant to the main story. Um, but I don't know. There's something about this show that just lacks the punch that the original concept and the original setup kind of have in mind. And eh, this episode continues to be there. It's not necessarily bad. But it's missing some important punch. And I think I've deliberated on what that may or may not be a whole lot. The Aristocrats of the Worldly Adventures, Serving Gods Who Go Too Far, Episode 8. A pretty fun episode in terms of the stuff that happens in this series. Um, with a couple of things being... Would that actually happen? Maybe it wasn't as bad as some of the other stuff. There's some of it that's just like, okay, yeah, some of the stuff did happen the way it did, but it's... Um, I guess one issue is like our main character is talking about making friends with anybody regardless of who they are, but um, they're a little hesitant to set up good um, continuous male um, friends. You know, usually if you're going to make a harem anime, um, I think people want to add at least a couple of guys just to make sure this isn't a complete um, fantasy fest. You know, you want to give the character friends. And some of these other shows are really good about doing that. Uh, this one, it seems to be not so great. It's not horrible. But, um... For the most part, the contents of the episode were kind of nice because it really did deal with some of the main ideas of the show and it's fun. You know, it's it's fun to see people react to some, some of this stuff. If you do it right, you can keep that as something that keeps the show fresh and it worked pretty well here. Um... Yeah. But otherwise, entertaining stuff. Let's see. In Another World with My Smartphone, Season 2, Episode 8. So, the reason I hesitate to talk about um, Aristocrats' Otherworldly Adventure is because a feeling that normally I've been feeling Otherworldly Adventure has and Smartphone mostly avoids definitely felt the other way around in this this week. Now, granted, um, this episode did some interesting things, but it uh, did feel like some of the ideas they were going for are okay, but they, um, it felt convenient for our main character that's like, okay, you're wanting the character angry and you've set up the right thing for them to be angry, but what they're saying doesn't seem to be hitting the nail on the nose for the thing that we want them to be saying and angry about. It seems more like an excuse to have him present and saying the things that other characters maybe should be saying, saying or something. But otherwise, it's okay um, development for what the show's been doing. I got a cheat skill in another world and became unrivaled in the real world. Hopefully I said that right. I don't know if I said real world twice. Um, entertaining episode. The problem with this series continues to be um, it moves at a slow enough pace that this would be a lot more entertaining binge-watched. And so I, I look forward to well, sorry, I... How to say this? I, I guess it's not that I look forward, but I definitely am going to be glad that y'all are going to be able to... Some of y'all are going to be able to watch it, binge watch it, and enjoy it in its something. Uh, but at the minimum, you know, it's still setting stuff up. Some of the things it's setting up are... But, you know, it's a show that's devoting a lot of its time to real world and some of it to the um, another world. And sometimes it changes that balance and this time it didn't, which I kind of expected. We got more from other world than I was expecting, so that's good. 
But, um... Yeah. Kind of want to see where it goes with the next episode, because it's got more stuff that it's setting up, but in this case, it's holding back in a little bit, I guess. Speaking of shows that don't get the mannerisms of animals correctly, uh, this episode um, definitely got the animal that was in it not acting anything like that sort of animal would. Especially at the end where they're like, oh, yeah, well, it'll behave because if it doesn't, then we'll just kill it and eat it. It's just like... Then you... Are you admitting that you live in a real world where bears understand what humans say? Oh, I guess, spoiler alert, there's a bear in the episode and it, it's actually very entertaining other than the fact that the mannerisms are just completely wrong. But, whatever. Uh, why Riliana ended up at the Duke's Mansion, Episode 7? Um, continuing to be an interesting series, I think. It's... It's definitely at a point where it's exploring its world quite a bit more. Because before it was just, like, not really exploring its world so much as it's exploring its kind of social sets up, which makes a lot of sense, you know, it's a very shoujo show in that regard, and I wouldn't say the way it's exploring the world is terribly exciting, per se, from a another world perspective, but it is doing a good job of kind of keeping the, um, I guess the social atmosphere interesting and intriguing, so it's continuing to be a good series. A Dead Mount Death play episode 7 had an important moment in it although I something about it took a little bit of steam out of it nothing too bad if anything the episode struck me as just being problematic in a way that the past couple of episodes have been I mentioned before that the show seems to be deliberately setting up more and more characters for us to understand and play with and could be relevant, hard to say. Feels a tiny bit of a distraction because we like our main characters so much. But one of the ways that it might not have been a great episode is, um, I'm forgetting her name. I think it's Misaki or something like that, but the unhinged assassin girl from the first episode. She's just been fun because when she does something, even if it's like a small background thing, she makes funny giggles at the right time where you're like, Jesus Christ, her brain really went there, didn't it? And this one, she felt a little more hinged than usual, which is unfortunate. Um, but, you know, it could be setting up some really good stuff that's about to happen. Waiting to see what it is, because some of the setup is just conceptually really good, and um, yeah. Let's see, what else is there to talk about? Uh, Tears of the Kingdom, I finally played more over this past week compared to last week. So last week I barely made any progress. I'm still kind of figuring things out slowly in this game. Uh, part of it is because a lot of the world map is the original Breath of the Wild map, there's parts of me that's just like, okay, I definitely want access to these and these and these areas. Mostly because it doesn't feel like it's given me... Um, certain things. So, uh, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think if I want to spoil about certain things, but like, um, I remember in Breath of the Wild, what you do with Korok, Korok Seeds was pretty conveniently handed out to you near the beginning, and then it was eventually moved to a place where, closer and closer to where you had to venture deeper into the game to find it. And if Tears of the Kingdom was trying to do that, I've missed it so far. If it's not trying to do that, then, you know, there's more exploration of already explored spaces I have to do, which hasn't been too bad in this game. They've done things that, for somebody who hasn't touched the game in a couple of years, or if I did touch it in a couple of years, it was barely touching the DLC and not really playing. It feels fine. I don't feel like I can explore every nook and cranny like I did with Breath of the Wild, because I just have too much knowledge of some parts of the world, and I just need to... I guess explore those and do something about them, but, um, yeah. Overall, it's been pretty nice. Um, probably the nicest thing, um, I, I guess I consider this the nicest thing because I didn't realize there was more to the world than what was being set up because there were parts of it that I was like, 
Well, the game didn't tell me to do this, so I'm not planning to do it just yet. <clears throat> but, you know, I finally explored it. I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, they really have a whole other piece of game here. So there's a lot of game to this game. Uh, beyond just, oh, yes, it's just the uh, same Breath of the Wild map all over again. There's definitely more to it than just that. Now, that said, there are some elements of it where it's just like, I don't know if I feel like I can explore every nook and cranny of a map that I've already explored before. The game kind of knows that, but at the same time, it's, um, I don't know. I'm not sure how to make certain advances, but that's fine. Sometimes this game is about just exploring what you can, so it's been fun in that regard. Beyond that, um, I don't know, I haven't been feeling that great this week, so Dead by Daylight's been slow. Tears of the Kingdom was happening because you can kind of zombie through that one. And I've been needing to zombie. I really wish this weekend was a bit longer. This coming weekend will be longer, maybe even longer than I know of, because the company may make it a four-day weekend. And I guess it's because um, I'm wondering if they know that they kind of didn't handle certain announcements this past week in the best way. I don't know. All I know is I'm having to make it through on a day to day and um kind of happy. So like the Twitch streamer I'm watching now, it's um, Henya the Genius. And I don't know if I want to talk too much more about that other than just to say that it's a voice that I wondered if I would never hear again, but I appreciate hearing it again. So, um, for the first time ever, I'm actually watching one of their streams. And, you know, it's nice. I kind of wish it was unmuted because just hearing that voice on in the background would have been pleasant. But, after this, I don't know, I might fire up some um, Tears of the Kingdom. I might do something else. I'm not sure. I guess I really just need to end this video and find out. So y'all, y'all have a nice week.